Married at First Sight Season 17, Episode 3427. This season is getting crazy, but not because of what's happening on screen, but what's going on behind the scenes, y'all. Most of this video is going to be about telling the story of this episode based on what's going on behind the cameras. Because let's face it, what's going on in front of the camera was pretty dry. So fasten your seatbelt because I'm going to be a little bit all over the place. So hang in there with me. But I've got some juicy tea for you. Plus some he said, she said, and some food for thought. Hi, I'm Tamara and this is Tamara Lynette Tells. You know, if they aired what was going on behind the scenes, this season probably would have been a blast to watch. The more I watch After Party, the more questions I have. So I dug up some answers. Let's get into it. First of all, at the beginning of the season, it was rumored that a producer got fired for having sex with a cast member. Well, that rumor doesn't appear to be 100% true. I believe the correct terminology should be an inappropriate relationship with the cast member. That member being Austin. I've done some snooping around and found out that the producer who went out with Austin, the one Austin initially lied about, she got fired almost immediately after that pizza party for getting her hangout on with a cast member. So from what I understand, she broke her contract by fraternizing with a cast member after her workday was over. I believe they're allowed to hang out with the cast after a certain amount of time has passed, like maybe after they tape the reunion or something. I don't know for sure. But whatever the rule is, she broke it and it cost her her job. According to Mass Fan, this was not a romantic relationship, but a strong friendship that included some coaching on how to behave on camera. Now, she also thinks that producers get a bonus if couples end up staying together, which plays into the rumor that I heard that I shared with you in the Decision Day video that Becca and Austin originally said no, but were convinced by a producer to say yes, so they retaped their Decision Day answers. I'm telling you, the real reality of the show is better than what they've been showing us. Moving on to Brennan and Emily. In the past couple of episodes, Brennan has been defending himself against Emily accusing him of being controlling when he asked her to delete her diary cam. Not sure how many there were that he didn't like. So uh, let's break down what we've seen while I sprinkle in a little bit of what I've discovered. So now on After Party, Brennan claims that they had an agreement not to say anything negative about each other on camera. Now, based on her behavior in the beginning of the season, I can imagine Brennan being the one to come up with this and Emily reluctantly agreeing to it because in the beginning, she really seemed to want Brennan to like her. But as we know now, Emily is not one to hold her tongue. However, Brennan was the one who was overly concerned with his image, so much so that he barely said a word in the first 18 episodes. I even made fun of him by calling him Mr. Excitement because he pretty much deleted his entire personality when on camera and came across as being so blah. During their visits with experts, Emily was the one who let us know what their issues were. And she complained to the experts in front of Brennan that he would get upset with her after the expert visits because she said negative things about him on camera. So this definitely felt like a Brennan rule to me. It wasn't until after decision day that Brennan found his voice and is now defending himself against Emily, accusing him of being controlling after he asked her to delete a diary cam. So let's get into that. Now, after decision day, he told his friend that all along he was miserable in his marriage, but he hung in there because he didn't want Emily to think that this is what a real relationship is like. Well, not to mention that he has a contractual obligation to film unless they release him from that obligation. And Brendan was clear early in the season that he was only interested in being friends with Emily. So the first time he brought up the diary cams in a previous episode, he said he was being nostalgic and they were looking through their diary cams, laughing and singing, ah, kumbaya. Okay, I put a little extra on it, but he insinuated that they were having a good time, reminiscing, and he stumbled across the negative one Emily created about him and asked her to delete it. Now, just so you know, they are each given their own device. I believe it's a cell phone by production to tape their diary cams on. So he wasn't looking through their diary cams. 
he had Emily's device and was looking through her diary cams. So in this episode, according to the guy who was miserable in his marriage and was super concerned about how he was portrayed on TV, wants us to believe that the two of them were curled up in the bed together. Emily, knowing that she had some negative confessions on her device, handed it over to Brennan so that they could have a diary cam pajama jam watch party. After he watched Emily's negative confessions, he calmly told her that she could save them for herself but then asked her to delete them and she happily obliged. That's his story. Now I'm going to pull a Pastor Cal on decision day for this one. And I have to say that I mean this in the utmost respect. I call BS. Now I do believe Emily probably said some gnarly negative confessions on her diary cam and that Brennan saw them. However, I do not believe that Emily just handed over her device in a diary cam pajama jam kind of way. Either she gave the device to him, maybe in the heat of the moment during a fight, like, ain't nobody scared of you looking at my diary cams? Here, take it. Or maybe he watched them without her permission or maybe something in between. However, I don't believe it went down as cordial and agreeable as he's portraying it. Maybe he was being controlling. Maybe he wasn't. But I don't believe it was an innocent, oopsie, you made a boo-boo by saying something negative. Don't forget to delete it, okay? Kind of situation like he's trying to make it out to be. What do you think? By the way, if you're enjoying this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button because I got some more juicy content coming your way. And if you have subscribed, thank you so much. Don't forget to hit that like button. On to the next story. Now, in this episode, the double date situation with Brendan and Cameron came up yet again. Now, when Clarepus first brought up the double date, that Brennan told Cameron they should go on a double date together. Then later, Cameron took responsibility for making the joke, as he called it. I couldn't figure out what the big deal was, especially after learning Emily swapped saliva with an Australian guy. Like, why was she boohooing when Clarepus told her about the double date? Actually, Clarepus was crying too. I feel like I need to know the timeline in order for this story to make sense. So when Cam told the story at After Party, he basically gave away the timeline that the double date comment or situation happened first and the kiss with the Australian came later. He said that when he originally told Clarepus about the double date, she laughed about it, thought it was hilarious. But then when Emily exchanged tongue information with the Australian, all of a sudden the double date situation morphed into this big thing, right? Now, something I noticed before when Cam and Brennan talked about the double date situation, I got the impression that their story was that they just made a joke about going on a double date, laughed it off, and then Cam told Clarepus. But this time when Cam told the story about the double date on After Party, something he said caught my attention. He said, I originally told Clarepus the joke about seeing the two girls. Two girls? What two girls? Had they picked out the girls they were wanting to go on a double date with? Were they flirting with these two girls? Were words exchanged with these two girls? Were they lusting from afar at these two girls? There's definitely more to this story because it also doesn't make sense that the wives would ask Cam and Brennan to lie about the story. Lie and say what? That they actually went on a double date, flew them to St. Louis to see the Gateway Arch, saw a Backstreet Boys reunion concert, then drove back home in a rental car? Why would the wives ask them to lie about that? And more importantly, why aren't they showing this footage? In season 14, when Alyssa was cutting up behind the scenes, they had no problem showing us her hidden camera footage. And it's so frustrating because these behind the scenes stories are far more interesting than watching them play foosball or sit crisscross applesauce at a park to talk about their failed marriages. Ooh, child, these producers got my pressure up. Okay, so moving on to the Australian guy that Emily kissed. According to Emily's IG post where she says, I never hid the Australian. It was after Brennan left the marriage. Cam and Bryn never protected me from disclosing that since I talked openly about it and took responsibility for it many times on camera before the pizza party. Now I'll read the rest of what she had to say in a minute. Yes, child, there is more. But for some reason, all mentions of this Australian guy were wiped from the show. 
It was a conversation that took place on After Party where we learned about them. Otherwise, this was not going to be part of their story. I don't know whose decision it was not to include it, but it just goes to show you that they seriously only show us what they want us to see. I think producers left it out because they had too many failed marriages by this point. I don't know if this was before or after Chloe and Michael's marriage, but imagine if it was before. That would have only left one couple together, Becca and Austin. I think they tried to piece together a storyline where there was still a chance for Emily and Brennan because this show is too hard to film following around a bunch of single people for the remaining four weeks or whatever of the season. So now Brendan is trying to make it seem like he protected Emily by not bringing up the Australian when, according to Emily, she had already told the story on camera. If that is true that she talked about the Australian on camera, could it be that Brendan never brought it up because he didn't care? He knew all along he didn't want to stay married? Or is it because he wanted to go on a double date with Cameron anyway? Okay, you still with me? You hanging in there? Good. Let me put Emily's post back up. She posted a series of stories before this last episode aired. Given I live what I now don't know the ending to due to all the messy editing plus storytelling happening, I just wanted to say, number one, don't believe what you see on TV because it's a version of the truth that people want you to see. Number two, I have no MF and idea what's being shown what false narrative they are going to show during tonight's new episode. And number three, or WTF the ending of this is. So given this, I wanted to also comment on the threats from Cam to Becca last after party, which is one, don't believe what you see or hear. Two, Cam manipulated the situation narrative, Becca. And when in reality, I'm the one with the quote unquote text. And then number three is the one I already read you about the Australian. In summary, y'all are being manipulated just like the rest of us. So buckle up and join us in writing the MF and wave. Lauren appreciation post for dealing with O'Lyer giving this clown the time of day. And because I needed an excuse to post this pic because it makes me laugh every time. Okay. So let's dive into number two for a minute where she wrote, Cam manipulated the situation, narrative Becca, and when in reality, I'm the one with the text. So there's a lot to unpack here. Now, when she was talking about Cam manipulating the situation, I believe she's referring to an allegation she made in a previous story she posted. See, I told you that I got all kinds of tea for you. So this is what she wrote. Oh, the Tweedles conspiring together again and mass manipulator Cam is trying to use Claire's narrative as his own hashtag classic Cam. So this is in reference to Cam claiming that Claire has silenced him and manipulated him all season. So Cameron claims that he came up with the story to tell producers why their marriage didn't work out, why they were moving out of the shared apartment and how to behave on camera and so on because Clarapus asked him to concoct these stories for them. Now, Emily is claiming that the opposite is true, that Cam is the one who had the idea to come up with these stories and Clarapus went along with him. Now, let's get back to that sentence where Emily says, I'm the one with the text. It sounds like Emily is claiming to have proof of some of this manipulation. Emily, if you're listening, release the text. Inquiring nosy fans want to know, girl. So the rest of the post, she says, me cheating, quote unquote, versus Brennan's cheating examples, not apples to apples, sitch. Wait until you find out which hashtag friend told Brennan about this one. Number three, oh, and KPP silencing us women and gaslighting us on national TV about us being gaslit, LOL. Plus bringing her husband on to have backup to double team bullying us girls, hashtag buzzwords. Number four, I'm back to being absolutely disgusted, hashtag women should support women. Also big typo, KKP, also known as Keisha Knight Pulliam. 
Yeah, so Emily is out to set the record straight, but since she's not supposed to be talking about the show in this way, she's not able to give enough details for all of this to make sense. Emily, we need you to come on here and tell us what's really going on behind the cameras, girl. I gotta see if I can get her on this channel. I think that would be a super juicy interview, don't you? By the way, I had mad respect for the way Brennan hopped into action after Emily's ATV accident and stood by her afterwards while she was healing. But how many times is he gonna throw it in our faces that he single-handedly saved Emily's life? After saving her life, this is the thanks I get. Great, I save her life, and then she treats me like this. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just me. Let me leave Brandon alone. <laughs> Lauren and Orion, same story. She sent him a long text to let him know she's not interested in a friendship. He responded by saying, I want to respond to this. Then he never followed up with a true response other than to tell the other husbands that he didn't know how to respond. Chloe and Michael, they are falling apart fast. Like what happened? We like blinked and all of a sudden things just have gone downhill. Michael appears to be getting cold feet. I don't know if Chloe's dream of having an animal sanctuary with their five adopted troubled teenagers did it, or if the idea of marriage being forever ever is scaring him away. I think it might be a combination of both. Being married forever ever to someone who wants to raise 500 animals and adopt the Brady Bunch on steroids is making him rethink the concept of marriage to Chloe anyway. Well, Chloe seems like good people. I think it's time for her to start protecting her heart and back away from this marriage. Otherwise, she's about to get her feelings hurt. So what do you think about all of these stories that are coming out on After Party and Emily's Instagram account? But we're never told during the season. I think the producers did themselves a disservice by burying this drama. There were some interesting stories going on while they were serving us up some boring episodes. I'm going to keep digging to see what else we missed. In the meantime, uh, that's all I got for now. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in my next video.